Hi, I'm Christiane Fernay, and I'm the Research Associate and Data Analyst on the VIA Culture Vocabulary and Action Project. Today, this tutorial will look at the heritage recording data that we obtained during the heritage recording phase of this project. During this phase, we got students to identify and record heritage assets within the cities that they are living within. And these cities uh, fell within four different countries, the UK, Italy, Serbia, and Greece. The whole point of this was to enable students to not only integrate the city that they were living within, but also to co-produce the her cultural heritage within that city. So, first of all, let's look at the dem demography of the uh, students within the sample. We recorded things regarding the students before they went out and identified these heritage assets in terms of their age, gender, religion, country of origin, language and, uh, and other things. And I'll go some, uh, through some of these statistics just now. First of all, if we look at the sample as a whole, so, so combining all those different countries and different students together, um, we had 103 three students in the sample, with 51 students being male, 45 being female. And the remainder of the students either did not want to say their gender, were not sure of their gender, or did not give a response. We then, when we look at age, if you look at the graph on the right there, we've got this really a, a varied age profile of the students within the sample. We have students from the 11 to 13 category, all the way up to 40 plus category. However, our students mainly fall within the 14 to 17 and 18 to 21 categories. Then we can look at the country of origin and the religion of the students. The map on the left shows the country of origin of, of the students with the, within the sample, with the locations that um, our uh, students came from uh, indicated in blue. As you can see, we've got students from across the globe, from all different continents, from South America, Africa, Europe and Asia. The uh, intensity of that blue colour in indicates the frequency of the students. So the darker blue means a higher frequency. So as you can see from um, the map here, we've got this highest frequency of students from Russia in the dark blue. And this is then followed by China. And then some other, other countries follow behind that. In terms of religion, we have a varied uh, religious profile of the students within, within the sample. However, the majority of students are Muslim. And then this is uh, followed by the dif different Christian denominations. So we've got Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant and other, uh, other Christian denominations which they did not specify. Then when we can look at the different countries in particular. So first let's look at on the left, Greece in terms of gender and age profiles. In terms of gender we can see that we've got 28 individuals out of 40 that were female and 11 that were male, and one individual did not want to say their gender. In terms of age, we've got this quite broad range of, of students from 18 to 21 to 41 plus, and it's kind of evenly distributed across these age categories. From Italy, we had 15 students, and 13 of these, so quite by far the majority, were male, and two were female. Again, we have a kind of quite broad age categories from 18 to 21 to 30, 36 to 40. Again, a quite even distribution between these categories like in Greece. Serbia, we had 16 students, 10 of these students were female and five were male. Um, and the remaining student did not, wasn't sure of their gender. And these age profile from Serbia um, was the youngest age profile with students uh, ageing from between 11 to 13 to 18 to 21. And then finally the UK we had 32 students, uh, 22 of these were male so the majority were male, 5 were female and 5 did not res respond or give a response. In terms of the age profile, we can see we've got quite a narrow age profile in the uh, UK sample, with all students falling within the 14 to 17 um, or the 18 to 21 categories. In terms of country of origin, as you can see from these maps here, we've got some very varied countries of origin within each of the, the countries under study. So for Greece, uh, in the top left hand corner in blue, you can see that we've got quite this dispersal of country of origin of the students across the globe. Uh, again, we've got students from um, South America, Asia, Europe, 
Um, however, we've got this concentration of students from Russia. In Italy, we've got um, the all the students originate from Africa, um, with the majority of students originating from Nigeria, with seven students originating from there. In Serbia, we have Again, not so much of a spread as Italy of students, uh, with the majority of students um, being from China and Serbia, with five students from each. And then finally, the UK, we have students from both Africa, Europe and Asia, um, with the majority of students originating from Somalia. And then when we look at the uh, demography of students in terms of religion, you can see it kind of varies by country. In terms of Greece, so the top left-hand uh, bar chart there, we can see it varies, but they, the majority of students uh, fall within some sort of Christian denomination. Italy, uh, again, um, it's either Christian denomination, but there's also, we have an, uh, some Muslim students. In Serbia, this is the most varied of all the groups, with no particular majority, um, or maybe the most is uh, atheist and students that, that were not sure of their religion. But finally, when we look at UK, the UK, this is the, the sample of students that have by far the most obvious majority in terms of religion, with the majority of students being Muslim. Now let's look at the heritage assets. So as I said, the students went out, identified and recorded their heritage assets. And they recorded various things about them in terms of are they tangible or intangible, so tangible things that you can kind of touch and intangible are things that you can't. I'll go into this a bit more uh, in a second. And then they characterise these things further. And we'll go through those, these results here, like we did with um, the student profile, looking at the sample as a whole and then the individual countries. First of all, let's look at this, this separation into tangible and intangible across the whole sample. So in total, we had 158 heritage assets identified. So the majority of these were tangible, 122 tangible heritage assets and 36 intangible heritage assets. From this, they were characterised further into specific things that, uh, that were tangible or intangible. So the, the bar chart on the left looks at the tangible characterisation. And as you can see from the bar chart, the most common tangible characterisation were mo modern historic buildings. Um, this was followed by uh, food or drink, and then followed again by religious buildings. In terms of intangible characterisations, uh, the most common characterisation was a song, followed by a language, um, and this kind of follows through um, onto festival and a dance. Then we look, ask the students what subjects they thought could, that could be taught based on these heritage assets. And kind of unsurprisingly, the, by far the majority was history. Um, this was then followed by language and art, and then a various other, other things um, from uh, culture to physics. Um, but history, language and art were the majority. Then when we look at heritage assets type by country, in Greece, 58 heritage assets were identified. In some cases, students um, identified the same heritage assets, but this was condensed down into 58 heritage assets. 43 of these were tangible and 15 were intangible. In Italy, 26 heritage assets were identified, 21 were tangible and 5 were intangible. Serbia, 28 heritage assets were, were identified with 24 tangible, so by far the majority compared to the other, uh, proportionately to the other countries, and four were intangible. And then in the UK, 34 were tangible and 12 were intangible. Now when we look at this characterisation, let's look at tangible first. For Greece, you can see that a historic archaeological site um, was the most common, followed by a food or drink or an object. In Italy, uh, there wasn't really a particular um, particular uh, strongest chosen, but modern historic building, religious building and an art piece were kind of the most common. In Serbia, the most common was a food or a drink, followed by a modern historic building. 
And in the UK, by far the most common tangible characterization was modern historic building, followed by religious building or recreational space. And then when we look at intangible classification, um, as you can see in Greece, the most commonly classified was a song followed by a poem. In Italy, it was a, so a song followed by religion. And in Serbia, it was they classified it as something else other than those given, um, followed by a language. And in the UK, it was a song followed by um, a spiritual expression, a language. And then from this, again, we got them to look at the subject characterization, so what subjects could be learned from these things. In Greece, again, it was, it, again, most commonly and across the board was uh, was history. This was followed by language in most instances, particularly in Greece and the UK, and in, and in some cases art, particularly in Greece. So as you can see from um, this tutorial, um, even though we had a variety of different students um, from a variety of different um, origins originally um, and different genders and ages, they were able to co-produce cultural heritage in the respective cities. So um, this is it's something that we will be able to do and it can be applied in a, a variety of different contexts and using a variety of different students. Thank you.